kids. Uh, welcome to Art Appreciation. I am Professor Elliot, and uh, I wanted to share my screen with you for a little bit just to walk through our Blackboard site and uh, answer particularly some questions about the book because we have an ebook set up through our Blackboard, but I've gotten some questions about the hard copy. So I want to make sure that everybody uh, knows what options they have and who to talk to if there's a problem, okay? So I'm just going to go uh, straight down uh, our left-hand menu here. That's where the important links are. So this left-hand menu is what you need. If uh, the course appears this way to you, you just need to pop that out. Now on your mobile phones, I do know that uh, it can be a little difficult to navigate this way. So always you know, feel free to uh, Ask me on Remind, the app, uh, download that if you haven't yet. And uh, you could email me, you could also sign up for a virtual appointment and we can take care of whatever tech issues uh, you might have because what you see is different from what I'm showing you here. So right off the bat, the, our entrance page is announcements. And this is the main way that I communicate changes in the schedule with you or say uh, last uh, semester, there was uh, quite a few blackouts across the city, which uh, required some adjustments to deadlines that week. And that sort of thing will be communicated via Blackboard announcement, uh, copied to your Tri-C email and on Remind, the app. So our code is included on your syllabus for the Remind app. I already have a, an announcement up here on uh, from Monday about MLK Junior Day, and a little welcome. Uh, take a time. Take a little bit to to read this. Uh, not just because of uh, the observance uh, of uh, you know honoring Dr. King, but uh, it sets the stage for what I really expect from our communication, from uh, our expression of ideas in this course. And uh, that applies to both, you know, uh, on screen, so me recording video or you speaking to me uh, via WebEx, but also typing in the discussion forums. So uh, uh, do take a moment to read. If you scroll down a little further, I've saved a couple messages from last fall, I think that are uh, particularly uh, useful, setting up email notifications from Blackboard, as well as uh, some information about the Learning Center, the library, and uh, uh, the help desk that can help you not only with Blackboard issues, but with issues with your personal computer as well. So this will uh, grow as uh, announcements need to be made throughout the semester. On top of uh, our menu is information, and you're probably seeing this link on all of your courses. So this is a page set by the college for our syllabus, and I have both doc and PDF versions, uh, especially if you're on your phone, uh, PDF might be a bit more phone friendly. Uh, information about me, which is copied on the syllabus as well. Uh, my basic info, my Tri-C email, and do make sure that you're emailing me from your Tri-C email. I have a, uh, made note of a couple personal emails that I might get messages from already if you've contacted me from those. But uh, using the Tri-C email server just ensures your academic protection because our conversations are private and protected by a federal act, uh, F-E-R-P-A, you might've seen that before, FERPA. It means uh, I discuss your academic progress only with you and not with anyone else. Especially if you share a Gmail or a Yahoo, use your Tri-C email account. Uh, if you're ever in a situation where you need to uh, leave me a message and uh, you don't have data or don't have Wi-Fi, you could also give me a call. This uh, number is voicemail box only. So my mailbox number is 7586. Leave me a message and I can check it, of course, on the phone. It will also send me an email. So uh, however you do it, it's gonna get to me. And uh, I've set some office hours mainly uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, 4 to 6 p.m., but uh, we're not limited to that. 
if those don't work for you, if you're online at a different time, uh, definitely uh, look at my virtual office hours sign up that I'm going to show you in a minute. And uh, we can set an appointment that way if you need to talk to me on WebEx. And of course, this is the virtual office link that's also over here, WebEx meeting room. So everything is, you know, redundancy pl plan, right? There's a couple different places for you to get very important information. I've also created a PDF of just the course schedule, uh, you know, weeks one through 16. That is PDF, again, phone friendly. So do read the syllabus. Our policies are important, but if the thing you want to refer to every week is just the cuts, the course schedule, this is what you would need to look at. Uh, a link to the Tri-C Student Code of Conduct. Also, um, we all need to sign the, uh, I don't know if you've uh, seen it before, uh, basically a statement of our, our pledge, our commitment to staying safe in this pandemic. And you can find that in my Tri-C space. If you need any help with that, let me know. Uh, that's part of Student co Code of Conduct. Uh, the other parts that are important for us, of course, are uh, academic integrity, uh, which we'll talk about when I get to the plagiarism link in a bit. Uh, this is the important part for those of you with questions about the book. Uh, the ebook opt-out opt out here is essentially a link to our Barnes & Noble bookstore. Everybody signed up for Art 1010. If you have access to my Blackboard, you also have access to the ebook. And uh, that means that you're opted into the first day program. The fee for the ebook is then included in your tuition and fees for the term. If you choose to have a hard copy, say you want to uh, buy straight from the bookstore, you can click ebook opt out and it'll redirect you to put in our course information and find the proper book, which of course is Gateways to Art, Understanding the Visual Arts. The third edition is what the bookstore has. Now, the text of the first day program says low cost, but look at this right here, $163.55. I don't know about you, but is that low cost? I don't know. They might not like me saying this, but if you find even a second edition of Gateways to Art via a third party, that will work and you can do that. Just to make sure you are not also charged for the ebook. Okay? So if you want both the ebook and a and a hard copy. Go ahead, I'm not in charge of your expenses, but just know that you do have options. Uh, you know, we're not forcing you uh, to buy this hard copy straight from Barnes & Noble, and you have the option of opting out of the first day program. And again, any more questions about this, any issues um, financial aid wise, uh, you need to contact, of course, uh, student services. Uh, questions about the book, Come on. That's a little bit hard to skip out of if you don't use it. Any questions about the book, of course, would go directly to the bookstore. And of course, there's customercare.bncollege.com uh, for FAQs before you uh, call or email. All right. Everything else here, um, I've got the same link for setting up BB notifications online learning. If any of you are uh, new to Blackboard, new to online coursework, uh, these are some good uh, tutorials here. The online learning items include some uh, helpful links, uh, Blackboard help, also basic student services, uh, including financial aid, which I just mentioned. That's a link for that. Uh, tech support, the help desk, uh, and other things that are of course, important for us uh, in general, our, our well-being in general, uh, counseling services provided through the college. And of course, sorry, there's some noise. 
our online accessibility statement. So if you have a letter already for accommodations, uh, go ahead and email that to me from your Tri-C email. Remember, we're gonna keep things confidential. Um, if you do not yet have a letter and uh, you need to get that ball rolling, uh, you can call one of these numbers corresponding to your campus. Um, other things, uh, online access, of course, uh, Everything we're doing is online. Everything we're doing is through Blackboard. So make sure that you have uh, proper internet access. Make sure that you have uh, a device that works for you. Again, those of you working on your phones, if uh, you're new to the app, let's set up a meeting and uh, talk about that if it's getting a little confusing because it's uh, easier to answer tech questions if I can see what you see. Uh, Netiquette statement, uh, like my statement from uh, uh, the Martin Luther King Jr. Day. We need to be polite, be mindful, be empathetic to our classmates, to our instructors, uh, because we're all going through this pandemic together and we don't need, you know, flame wars and uh, trolling on our course discussion boards. So online and even um, outside of Blackboard, uh, this is also a, a good uh, practice for anything, anything online, even social media, uh, for you to remember to uh, follow a, a standard of civility, of good manners and respect. That being said, there's definitely speech, hate speech, bigotry that uh, we don't, as a society, have to tolerate. Uh, so join me in working to call that out when it's needed. But uh, remember, um, we take the high road, right? Uh, when uh, Even when someone goes low. That's a, a good uh, thing to remember. Also, remember we are in a college course. So as you are writing uh, discussion posts, threads, as you are composing emails to me and your other instructors, it's a little different from texting your friends, right? It's a little different from tweeting. It's a little different from Snapchat. So it's always good practice to um, get into academic mode and use capital letters, right? And uh, get rid of those abbreviations and use proper punctuation. Uh, good, good practice for um, school mode as opposed to uh, everyday mode. So that's uh, what we have uh, in online learning items, in addition to, at the very bottom here, uh, tutorials for online learning and uh, Collaborate Ultra is very specific. It's essentially like a WebEx or Zoom. We're not using that, but you might be using it in another course. So that's there for you just in case. Let's go back up to our menu, uh, WebEx Meeting Room. When you click this link, essentially, you are virtually standing outside my office, right? Um, of course, I'm recording on Zoom here, so WebEx doesn't have access to my camera, but usually it'll start right up. Uh, you can uh, check your mic and your camera before starting. And if I'm logged in, uh, I will get a notification. If I'm away from my computer, I will also get an email saying that you're waiting for me. Um, so if I haven't already started a meeting that you can then join, and you'll see a button for that when you log in. Uh, I can then start a meeting and uh, get you in and talk to you. Again, I'll be on my uh, on WebEx in my personal meeting room, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, 4 to 6 p.m. is when I'll automatically be uh, on WebEx that way, okay? Um, all right, appointment sign up is a link to uh, one of my Google uh, uh, Sheets here where I have, uh, again, those office hours set up and so you can see my other class as well from two to four. These other times I've kind of set nine to 9 p.m. are half hour increments that you can sign up for, a name and email that I'll get a notification about. If you need to meet after 9 p.m. well, and before 9 a.m. for that matter, um, email me specifically with a couple times, okay? So this is a way to cut back on emails about, you know, 
when are you available? You got it right here. You know exactly when I'm available. And as other things uh, fill up my time uh, that I need to share with you, I'll block them out here, okay? Lessons is the page you will basically start with every Monday. Our weeks run Monday to Sunday with a midnight deadline on those Sundays for any work assigned during the week. So week one, for instance, we have uh, some work to do before midnight on January 24th. And when you click on the name, it opens up with a to-do list at the top. Basically reading and downloading the syllabus is the most important thing I want you to do this week. Uh, look at the term paper assignment, which is updated. Some of you saw a, a confusing date from last fall for December. Our date is in May, make no mistake about that. Uh, both uh, doc and PDF for you to download just like the syllabus. And then I wanna get you started talking about art. And I've already had a couple questions about this, so let's uh, talk a little bit about it. Art Around You, uh, this prompt, is meant to be about public art. Now, before the plague, uh, you know, we were maybe a bit more active, not just going to school and work, but uh, going uh, out to restaurants and other things all around town where we have maybe had more access to uh, complete this assignment. So if you, because of COVID-19, are not able to uh, leave, leave home, or really there's nothing on your route from home to school or home to work, uh, dig back through your, your past uh, photos from, from better times, when you might have grabbed a photo of public sculpture, graffiti, a mural or poster, uh, something in the public, okay? And something man-made. Our, uh, our wonderful views of the art of nature, those are perfect topics for your earth sciences course, but for this course, we wanna talk about things made by people, art made by people. So if you are safe and able to take a photo, go ahead and take it or look back at some of your old photos for ideas and share those, answering these three questions. Well, essentially, well, one is a prompt, I guess I should say. Describe your chosen artwork and why it catches your eye. What could be the message behind the imagery? And what does your choice say about your own answer to the question, what is art? Now I'm gonna show you a little trick here. I would copy and uh, paste because sometimes the way Blackboard does it, you don't always see the prompt uh, as you actually get into the form. So these are already some threads that uh, we need to read, not just me, but you too. Uh, so already we have some great examples for art around you, but when you create your own thread, you can paste, ah, see there it is, the prompt, in case uh, you don't see this, if you're working on your phone, it might be a different format. So copying and pasting prompts is always a good uh, idea. Then you have it in the text box along with what you're writing and actually answering question to question. So you know you're gonna get full credit for your thread. And then as you read, I'm not gonna click on anybody so I don't embarrass anyone. Uh, as you read through your classmates' threads, reply to at least two classmates. And I want these replies to be substantive, not just, hey, good job, although it's great to encourage each other. Uh, talk about what they picked, right? Uh, your experience of it or your opinion of it. Uh, it's okay to disagree if, if you feel like uh, the art that they have cho chosen and described is about something else. Uh, if you have something to add that they didn't mention, go ahead and add that. So we want these uh, responses, these replies to be things that push, move the conversation forward. A classmate of yours might have an insight that uh, really opens it up for you and uh, vice versa. So, you know, kind of work yourself up to being comfortable with maybe sharing something that's not just a, a nice, safe, uh, uh, hey, I agree, right? Uh, make sure that you're always looking, pushing toward new ideas, okay? 
So that is something to do between now and Sunday. And typically one of our problems, maybe later in the semester, is uh, nobody else has posted a thread yet and it's Thursday or it's Friday, what do I do? That's not a problem this week. You have plenty to choose from, which is wonderful. Um, if you're feeling a little nervous, if you're an early bird and you, you post your thread on Monday, uh, be patient with your classmates, right? Uh, everybody's schedule is different and uh, check back in every now and then and see if there's threads for you to reply to. Uh, this, uh, this course each week, the lessons are not meant to be completed in one sitting, especially when you add the reading into it. That's a long sitting. So break things up into increments, right? Maybe work for a half an hour or an hour on Monday. And then as your schedule uh, fits, uh, make sure you have a one or two more sessions in the week. So you don't have to do it all at once. All right. Speaking of the book, this is a, a basic uh, collection of links here offered by the publisher. Um, Ebook Gateways to Art 3E is third edition. Let's make sure we're green. So that means everyone should have access. If you click this and you don't see anything, you should scroll down and see a, 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 a contents. If you don't see anything, let me know uh, because that can be tied to your financial aid. It could be tied to uh, your registration. It could also, sometimes it's the way I've set up the course and I've you know not clicked the right box and I need to go back through and make sure I do that. So these will show me, you know, uh, who's in the title, who, who's in the chapter, who's in the introduction. I'm not using anything from the publisher as an assignment. So when you look at inquisitive activities and videos and interactives, these are all study aids. Inquisitive activities are great if you're having trouble with the vocabulary, if uh, you wanna kind of test yourself uh, using inquisitive. It's a nice low pressure way to do that you're not going to be graded on it. The things I'm grading are test one, test two, right? So basically test one will be over chapters 1.1 through 1.10 and test two is 2.1 to 2.10, okay? So chapter to chapter, you can test yourself and get ready for the graded uh, material later on. And in addition to these, there's some great videos and interactives that can help as you're reading if uh, uh, you're more of a visual learner, but also my lessons folder, let me go back to it, uh, to week two actually. I've got some slides from last time, which I might be fixing up because, you know, videos can always be improved, but I've also got chapter modules that uh, will launch, um, including, uh, websites that'll go into a new tab, like uh, some info about the Artist Shepherd Ferry and uh, the piece Obey uh, that uh, is mentioned in chapter 1.1. As you go through it, and here on the right-hand side, you can click through, launching something about uh, the letters of Vincent van Gogh to his brother Theo. And uh, the final, link. It's just a, a learning activity. If you're a doer, if you're more hands-on, uh, hopefully I'll have plenty and the publisher will offer plenty of opportunities for you to do some making. So to make a tessellation that is again mentioned in chapter 1.1. So I've got some extra kind of uh, teacher curated content in these chapter modules. So you can have this open, the ebook open, and maybe even the publishers interactives open all at the same time to make sure that you get the concepts of uh, chapter 1.1 and so on uh, in the way that works for you. And uh, this is important for next week's uh, discussion post. Our book uses a collection of gateway images. These are examples of artwork like Raphael's painting, monuments like the Taj Mahal, uh, prints like Hokusai's Great Wave, Frida Kahlo, Carrie Mae Weems in photography, Ai Weiwei and some of his dissident art, 
and, and some good Mayan uh, examples, uh, just for, uh, a couple of examples from all over the world, many different time periods that we're going to see over and over again. Uh, so these images show up in the textbook as well in special sections colored in a dark teal. So you might uh, recognize those more easily. You're picking one of these to talk about next week to get you started thinking about that term paper, right? So make sure if uh, you don't see or you know you miss the gateways and don't quite uh, remember which one's which, as you read the book, you can always click gateway images on the left-hand menu uh, to work on uh, week two's discussion about the gateway images. And these discussion boards, uh, the introduce yourself is optional. I put my own thread up there that uh, you can reply to. You don't have to just make your own. Um, but uh, so read about this so you can connect with somebody. Uh, make sure that we're all uh, on the same page in terms of tone and other aspects of netiquette. So when we start to offer uh, other views, other opinions, we know that it's in the spirit of learning and, uh, you know, nobody's trying to diss you, okay? So as we move on, you know, through your term paper, we, I have a couple museum sites to choose from. I'm partial to the Cleveland Museum of Art. We've also got Mocha Cleveland in town. The Met and MoMA are also great examples and great uh, resources for uh, any contextual issues that you might run into with your paper topic. MoMA has some great videos that you'll see as we move on to part two. And the Met has the wonderful Halbrine, excuse me, Halbrine Timeline of Art, which has articles upon articles for you to search if you become enamored with a particular artist. And down here is the writing resource section where we have the journal that is ungraded, but a great way to share with me uh, what you're writing about, and if you need to get, you know, more of a rough draft look before we turn in our papers at the end of the semester in May. An MLA style guide, which we will go over um, in, was it week six or seven, I believe, including uh, how to set up your paper, font, and all that good stuff, what I'm expecting from you, uh, essay structure-wise. Plagiarism Tips, another web uh, resource for you. Oh, and I'll fix that. That needs to be opening in a new tab for you. And Bibliography, I'm currently working on. Um, it's a work in progress. I've just got some great examples of uh, one of my favorite art, uh, artists and writers right now. And so I'll build that out as we go. Other tools uh, through Blackboard that you might uh, need or be familiar with, uh, including, let me click over here, Remind. So I'm gonna set that up to make sure that we have access here uh, through Remind WebEx, which is of course what you'll use to uh, come to my virtual office and course materials, what you need for uh, opting out. There's always at least two ways of getting places on Blackboard. Scroll on further and maybe uh, the most important things will be your grades, of course. So on top of all the online resources, oh, there should be a grades link, um, but you guys know how to do that too. So that is kind of a run through of our Blackboard. If you have any issues with Blackboard, with the ebook, those are great topics for a virtual uh, appointment. So make sure you sign up or email me for a time or show up during one of my office hours. And uh, hopefully we'll all get on the same page and get the ball rolling for next week when we start reading chapters 1.1 through 1.3. All right, I'll see you later.